In today's world, thousands of data points are being constantly collected. Phones, apps, websites, sales systems, surveys, toasters. So what happens when one system needs data stored by another system? How do we move data between databases? How does all a company's data get put into a central data warehouse? This is called data integration, and we do it through a process called ETL. ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. Data is extracted from the source system, transformed to match data types, naming, and scheme of the target location, and then loaded into the target database. There's very little standardization with data. Applications, databases, and programming languages can all use different data storage methods that may not be compatible. So the transformation step can be the most challenging part of ETL. Examples of transformation include, while loading data from multiple sales systems into a data warehouse, one app stores address in a single field and it must be split into multiple fields for street, city, state, zip to be stored separately. While migrating data off an old application into the new version, zip code is transformed from the five digit zip code to the nine digit full postal code. A company merger results in two different customer codes, one an integer, the other a hexadecimal value. The acquired value has to be transformed to fit the new parent customer field. So how do we accomplish this ETL? There are a ton of tools to aid us. There are user interface based, no code tools such as Talend, Xplenty, and Ab Initio. Code based ETL can be built using almost any programming language, but most popular is Python. And there are tools to help with code ETL such as Airflow or Bonobo. There are more hybrid solutions that have a drag and drop interface, but allow for some coding flexibility. These options include SSIS, Informatica, and Data Stage. And then there are full business intelligence platforms that include some built-in ETL ability, such as SAS, Tableau, and ClickView. If these don't fit your needs, don't worry, there are many, many, many more. So with all those options, how do you choose the best? Start by asking if you want developers and engineers to do the ETL work. If so, a more code-based strategy would probably be better. This will allow for more flexibility, complex ETL, and is often easier to troubleshoot and modify code than clicking around in a GUI. No-code options are a great choice if analysts and non-developers need the ability to quickly load in data. If your ETL needs are fairly basic, pick a straightforward ETL to one avoid enterprise data platforms that include tons of features you won't use. The options seem to be endless, so take some time to consider your specific needs and find the tool that works best for your case. Many tools will promise a simple drag and drop ETL that can be done by anyone in a day, but there are many challenges in data integration, so be wary of the marketing and promises of magic solutions. Another important thing is don't forget about SQL. It's common to get caught up with fancy ETL tools and start doing significant data work within them. Even extracting data from a database, doing transformations, and loading it back into the same database, which could have been done with a simple SQL store procedure or view. SQL does data extremely well, and database engines are optimized for it, better than other coding languages, so use it when you can. If you can connect directly to a database and query them, do that when possible. Use ETL tools when needed, but don't be afraid to focus them on getting data into databases where SQL can take over. Now that you've selected your tools, when architecting an ETL process, some other things to consider are validation, logging, and rerunability. Consider how you will validate that all data was transferred from one system to another. Different tools will have different ways to help with this, but there are a few general things to plan for. Counts between source and target systems to ensure records weren't lost along the way. Validating random rows in the target system against data in the source system. For example, a customer has the same address and the destination that it had in the source. Logging performance stats. If your 15 minute process is suddenly taking three hours, there could be a data issue or an infrastructure one and validating data formats. If you're storing phone numbers with no special characters, have queries running to make sure there are no dashes or parentheses in the field. And finally, rerunability is important for ETL. There will always be failures due to unexpected data or infrastructure hiccups. The ability to just rerun the process rather than figuring out where it failed and what data got loaded and what didn't is so important for troubleshooting and scalability. Some ways to create a rerunnable process could be staging tables that truncate and reload, using date-time fields to only load records created after the max value in the destination, row versioning to capture only records that exist in the source but not the destination, and change data capture tools to only look at records that have been added or updated. Whatever method works best for your architecture, be sure to test failures, the ease of restarting the ETL process, and making sure data isn't loaded multiple times creating duplicates. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. Stick around for more data content by subscribing to the channel or clicking a video on screen. See you in the next one.